Hi guys, my name is Bas and welcome to another episode of my SPSS YouTube tutorial videos. It's been over two and a half years since I uploaded the last SPSS video and I thought that it was about time to add some new content, some more advanced content because I've learned a lot more about SPSS in the meantime and I want to share that knowledge with you. So before we get started, I want to stress that uh, I do recommend watching the, all the previous videos because we're going to get into yeah a bit more difficult materials from now on. And you do need your basics to be up to date. So please watch. Uh, I think I've uploaded 12 videos so far. So please watch them first uh, before you get started with this one. But you are not obligated to do so. Almost every video starts with a new topic. Um, so you can also watch them by yourself. Uh, and then before we get started, I want to ask you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, leave a like, ask a comment, uh, stuff like that, because I want to make this channel grow even further and you can be a big part of that. So, uh, and then let's get started. In one of the last episodes, I think it was episode 10, I discussed a single regression uh, model. So that means the, uh, the relation between X and Y in a single, uh, in a one-way direction. So what is the effect of X on A? For example, if I, uh, if I work for one more hour, with how much does my salary raise? So we have an independent and a dependent subject. Uh, it was a single regression, so we only had one dependent and one independent variable, but today we are gonna start with multiple regression, uh, multiple linear regression. And uh, there are multiple uh, versions of that because if you have, uh, for example, you still want to know the relationship between X and Y, uh, but you also have other variables. And those variables can be uh, a confounder or uh, a mediator or a moderator. Yeah. Uh, and I will discuss those three in three separate videos. So today we're going to start with the first one, which is a confounder. And if you want to take a look at what a confounder is, I've got this uh, table right here. And you want to know uh, the relationship between the rate of ice cream consumption, so how much ice cream you eat, and the number of sunburns you get. And so the independent variable is the rate of ice cream consumption, and the dependent variable is the number of sunburns. Well, this isn't a really logical, uh, this isn't a really logical uh, relationship. So uh, if you would do a single, so a singular uh, regression uh, model on this, then you would get an answer. But as you can see, there might be confounding uh, variables and confounders are variables which interrupt, yeah, so disturb uh, your uh, act the actual relationship you're looking for. So because as you can see, hot temperatures has an effect on both the rate of ice cream consumption, because if it gets warmer, you want to eat more ice cream. And it also has an effect on the number of sunburns, because the, uh, the warmer it gets, uh, the, uh, the more sunburns you get. And if you want to know the true relationship between ice cream consumption and the number of sunburns, that means that you have to take uh, the hot temperatures into account. You have to make sure that the confounder, in this case hot temperatures, is a part of the model and that you neutralize it. And SPSS automatically does so, which is amazing. Now I've made up... Uh, and uh, so I've made uh, my own data set here with 25 respondents, which have eaten between one and 10 uh, ice creams uh, in a month. Uh, I've also uh, taken care of the temperature of a scale of one to 10, uh, which is theoretical. Uh, if, of course, it can be like 25 degrees outside, but it's between one and 10. And I've also taken care of the sunburns, which was between one and 10 times every month. And so the original, the original relationship you want to find out is the rate of ice cream consumption to the number of sunburns. And so you could do a single, uh, a single linear relationship uh, regression uh, on that. And to do so, just like I showed in uh, episode ten, you go to analyze regression linear, and then the dependent is the amount of sunburns, and the independent in this case is previous is going to be ice cream so uh, you want to know the effect of ice creams which is the independent which is the x on the dependent being sunburns 
and if you press paste and then you get open your syntax you uh, select the code and then run the selection you'll see and you'll scroll down to the bottom to the coefficients table you'll see that uh, the ice cream has an uh, has a, a beta uh, no, has a slope of 0 0.841 which means that for every ice cream you eat in a month, uh, you will get 0.8 sunburns extra. And if you look at how significant this is, it has a significance value of 0. Uh, 0. 0.000, which is smaller than the p-value of 0. 0.05, which we most of the time choose. It's even it's even lower than the uh, than the uh, than the value of 0. 0.01. If you would take that as an alpha. So if we would take just just this single uh, linear relationship, a uh, single linear regression, then you would say that eating ice creams would increase the amount of sunburns you have. That's what you uh, that's what you can conclude from this single linear uh, single linear regression. But that's of course not true. The amount of ice creams you eat you eat doesn't in fact in increase the amount of sunburns you get. So that's why we're gonna take the temperature into account, and you uh, so by inserting it into the uh, by inserting it into uh, the regression model. So you go to analyze regression linear, and then uh, you keep sunburn as a dependent. You keep ice cream as an independent, and then you uh, go click on next. And then you add as a second independent variable, you add temperature. Then you press paste, then you go to your syntax, you select the syntax, and then press the big green play button, so run selection. And then if you go to the bottom, uh, you'll see the coefficients table. Uh, the first model is only from ice cream to sunburn, so this is the same as we previously had. If you uh, so this doesn't take temperature into account. So if you would eat an ice cream, you would get 0.8 extra sunburns uh, in the month with a significance value of zero. But now we added temperature into the model, and now we get a new model, model two, uh, which shows both the uh, both the uh, the new effect of ice cream and the new effect of temperature. And what you can see is that the effect of temperature, so the slope, is 0 0.951 with a significance level of 0 0.000. So temperature has a massive effect on the amount of uh, uh, sunburns you actually get. Well, if we look at the new ice cream value, you can see that the slope is only 0 0.087 with a significance level of 0.574, which isn't significant anymore. So by taking the confounder into the regression model, it automatically splits the effects. So if we take a look at the model, we can see that the true effect of hot temperatures on the number of sunburns is 0.951. So, uh, so uh, if the temperature increases, you get more sunburns. While the true effect from ice cream consumption on the number of sunburns is only 0 0.087. While we thought that it was 0 0.8. So by taking the new confounder into account, so, uh, so making it, uh, uh, so by adding temperature into this regression model and therefore making it a multiple linear regression, that, uh, show, uh, that now shows the true relationship between ice cream and sunburn, which is barely there. It isn't significant by a country mile. So by adding a confounder, which disturbs your uh, actual research, you uh, you can see the true value of the relationship you're looking for, which was in this case ice cream to sunburn. So the more confounders you take into your multiple regression uh, model, the uh, the cleaner the actual result of the relationship you're looking for will be, because there will be more uh, because there will probably be more. Uh, 
factors t- which you should take into account. For example, the amount of clothes you wear. If you wear a lot of clothes, then you will get less sunburns. So you should also take that one. That's also a confounder. So if you would take that one in this model as well, then it would show the effect of clothes on sunburns. And then the ice cream relationship would probably be even lower. So by uh, so a confounder, as a conclusion, a confounder is a, is a variable which disturbs the relationship you're looking for. And by adding it into your SPSS multiple regression linear, linear model, uh, you take it into account and SPSS automatically neutralizes it. So it shows the afterwards, it shows the separate effects and so the true effect of what you're looking for, which in this case is not significant anymore. So this shows the importance of adding confounders into your research into SPSS. Because we first took only a look at uh, ice cream to sunburns, which seem to be uh, which seem to be um, significant, but after adding temperature as a confounder, we saw that it's actually not. Okay, so that was it for today. I hope I uh, explained the basics of a regression mo- uh, of a multiple regression model with confounders. I will make a separate uh, video on how to actually. Uh, uh, do calculations with this, but for now I'm gonna call. Uh, I'm gonna uh, stop it here. All right. So very soon I'll be back with more videos, especially on uh, multiple uh, linear g- regression, but also other more difficult SPSS topics. So uh, if you like SPSS but want to know more, you can definitely eat your ar- eat your heart out in the near future. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and then I'll see you guys in another video. Ciao.